learn how to create, sustain, and scale up your print-on-demand business with the latest tips, guides, and strategies to help you start selling and making money today. Welcome to the Sales on Demand Show, and here's your host, Adam Schneider. Welcome back, everybody. Guess what? The show continues. It's episode 28. I bet some of you thought that I had stopped making the podcast. No way, man. I'm still here. I'm still going strong. I was just out of town. And it was a lot of fun. I was in the mountains, in the Crowsnes Pass, which is the border between Alberta and British Columbia, and is also the most beautiful place on God's earth. Mountains, cold lakes, freezing cold lakes, and seven days of a lot of work, but also a lot of fun. I was a speaker at a children's summer camp. And uh, it was it was a lot of work, <laughs> but uh, it was an adventure, and I'm very glad I went. I am back, and basically back to work, back to making podcast episodes and building up the business for quarter four. Uh, if you don't know what quarter four is, you should probably know that business people, corporations, we divide the year up into four quarters, that is three months each, right? There's 12 months in a year, so the quarter four will be um, October, November, December. Sorry, I had to think about that for a minute. September is kind of part of quarter four, but it's not really. And uh, realistically, the most busiest parts of quarter four are basically the month before Christmas. That is when you're going to see sales spike through the roof. But it's summertime right now. And sales are going to be slow. Looking at my sales, they have dropped significantly from where they were over Mother's Day and Father's Day. That's normal. I'm not really pining over that. I'd love to have more sales. So I'm going to be working this month on building evergreen listings. So I'm going to be looking for events that occur in people's lives that they would commemorate with uh, print-on-demand products. And I'm going to be creating a uh, product for those. Uh, I don't have anything for birthdays, anniversaries. Um, so I'm going to be... I need to work on that. And I think there's a huge demand for that that I'm not tapping into. So uh, my sales tend to go up wildly with the Mother's Day, Father's Day, and all the seasons things, which is fine because, you know, you make a lot of money during those seasons, but it's always nice to have sales that just continue year-round, no matter what, and those are called evergreen. So, this episode is going to be what to do during the summer to maximize your quarter four sales. So, hopefully you're out having some fun in the summer. Go swimming, get some sunlight, some vitamin D. Don't spend all day locked up in your office or your room or your basement. This is, I mean, if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, that is, this is like the three months of the year that you can actually walk outside and be mostly comfortable. Um, I guess if you live uh, in Arizona or somewhere in the southern United States, you probably already passed that part and you're hiding in your house again while the sun mercilessly tries to kill you. I feel you, but it's not happening to us here. In Canada, the sun is our friend, and when we see it, it's great. It's been really thunderstormy here, which is really unusual. Uh, lots of thunderstorms, like two a day for the last week. Uh, I, my trailer is leaking like crazy. But it looks like we're going to have some normal weather here, so I'm looking forward to working on that. But in the meantime, uh, if you're looking to make some comments on any of these episodes, please join up with the Facebook page. All you got to do is like the page and it'll appear in your news feed. You can comment. I'm a Facebook junkie, so I'll see it right away. I always respond to comments. I comment on things for no reason. Uh, I just like to engage with people on Facebook and uh, even Instagram. 
I don't have an Instagram page set up yet, uh, but I might soon. So things are also coming back into stock. Uh, it did take a long time. So my FBA listings, uh, hopefully you guys got something out of the, the FBA episode. I haven't had a lot of comments about it, but uh, it is really the biggest thing that I could recommend to go from, you know, a couple thousand dollars in sales to like $200,000 in sales. That's where I'm aiming this year. And I'm pretty confident that I'm going to reach that and maybe more depending on how much financing I can obtain. Once you start getting over like $50,000 in sales, uh, you start to run into cash flow issues. Most people don't have 50 grand lying around to fulfill orders. Uh, so when orders come in hot and heavy over a short period of time, you have to be able to send the orders out and not be able to get paid for a while because Amazon doesn't pay you the money for sales for, I, I don't know, it's up to eight weeks. It's a long time. And uh, that is kind of a pain, but that is the way Amazon works. And if we want to sell on a platform, and Amazon is a good platform, then you got to play within their sandbox. So I've been seeing people talking about a few things, some obstacles, and I wanted to just quickly run through some of these obstacles and why, A, they're not a huge problem, even though people like to make them into a huge problem, and B, how you overcome these obstacles and even make them into benefits for your customers. So long delivery times. Uh, the supplier of coffee mugs that I use, Custom Happy, they were, I don't know, they were slammed over Mother's Day and Father's Day. Like, I've never seen it that bad. So delivery times stretched out significantly. And that's because um, these products are being made in a warehouse. and They're not pre-made, right? Obviously, they're not pre-made. Print on demand. It's right in the title there. Everything is made when it's ordered. When you when you get that order from Amazon and it gets sent to the integration, those people have to make that when it's ordered. So when you suddenly get an increase in volume, like 20 times normal, um, it's not possible. F like the physics of it mean that everything's going to be delayed. So it doesn't matter if the warehouse hires five times as many people, the delivery times are still going to stretch out. And it's not just because it takes longer to, to print these things, it's because the mail system, they also get slammed with orders, and especially at Christmas time. So I have mentioned before that Gearbubble, Don Wilson, he puts out the uh, delivery deadlines. And he'll say like, well... June 10th is the delivery deadline for Father's Day. No, I think it was June 6th this year. Um, I just ignore that because I, I'm never going to promise anything to any customer. Promising delivery by a certain date to a customer is a quick way to have an angry customer. And I just don't want to deal with that. So I'd happily turn down a few sales from people who want their item like right now. Uh, just to avoid having these problems on an ongoing basis. Um, or I will tell people that I think it might arrive in time, but I cannot guarantee it because I have no control over the Postal Service. And that is the, that's the plain truth of it. I mean, most of the time, if somebody lives in the continental United States, uh, it shouldn't take more than six to eight days for something to get through the mail. If it's a t-shirt, a coffee mug, if it's something small, it's going to take about six to eight days to get through the mail. Canada, three weeks. I mean, it is brutal. I don't know why. Um, it normally used to be two weeks from order to delivery. Um, for some reason, Canadian shipping has just been awful. And it hasn't gotten better after the postal strike. It is now July. And uh, I'm, well, I haven't had anything shipped to Canada recently, but back in June, shipping was still taking up to a month. So because I get a lot of Canadian orders on Etsy, 
uh, it ends up being a bit of a pain. The Canadian customers are contacting me, and I just tell them straight up, you know what, Canadian shipping sucks, and I'm really sorry. That's the best I can do. Uh, because I'm also Canadian, a lot of them think that I am shipping from my own house. And I'm like, well, there's no way for me to ship in Canada profitably. Canadian shipping is expensive as well as a really long time to get there. So it's really annoying. But anyway, you'll probably get most of your orders from the United States. And the United States shipping is pretty good. So there's other issues that people run into not just the long delivery time. So this means, going back to the delivery times, it means that when you create a listing on Amazon or Etsy, if you know that a holiday is coming up, check your handling times. There's two different times on Amazon. There's handling time and shipping time. Generally speaking, the shipping time isn't a big deal. Set it to six to eight days, you're, you're perfectly fine. Amazon really doesn't track that as a metric. So if it takes 10 days to get delivered, they're not looking at the the tracking number to make sure it's getting delivered in time. They're just looking to make sure the tracking is valid, that it's going to the right address. Now the handling time, they are very strict about this. Um, so I would recommend setting white coffee mugs and t-shirts for 10 days handling time all year long. And the reason for this is that most of the time it's going to ship faster than that. But if it doesn't, then at least you have that breathing room. And uh, it's better to over, sorry, under promise and over deliver. I had to think about that for a minute. So you're promising 10 days, but you're delivering faster than that most of the time. And your customers will be delighted to get their product earlier, but if it takes longer, they will be undelighted. They will be angry. They will be irritated. They will leave bad reviews on your listings, which is not good. So the basic common items that you'll ship out, coffee mugs, t-shirts, um, travel mugs, uh, put at least 10 days. And it's not a bad idea to put 14 days. I mean, it seems like a long time, but um, in the end, really the your your customers will appreciate the honesty of it even if they don't know that that's why you're doing it and you'll get people who will cancel because they think this is going to take a long time and you know what that's just the way it goes it's better to have a couple of people cancel than to have amazon suspend your account because you have late handling times so i almost ran into that over father's day i ended up having to just mark some items shipped because i knew they were going to ship that evening or the next day but it was at that 10 day mark already so um, always check your listings to make sure your handling time is correct do not put black mugs as five days that's not enough time uh, for some reason black coffee mugs take longer and um, they're really finicky so something can go wrong and they have to redo it and uh, they cost more too so uh, I don't really know what to tell you about that. Just make sure that you don't run into a problem. It's not your bubble's fault that they have 20 times the normal orders. This is the way this marketplace works. So be prepared for that. You are the one that's accountable for how long it takes an item to get there. You can complain about it all you want. It's not going to make it happen faster. So turn it into a benefit by telling your customers these are handmade items. It's really busy right now, but your item is being custom made as we speak. It's a special gift that is being made for you when you order it. So that's a way to sell it, make it unique. And you should always be selling the benefits, not the drawbacks. All right, so talking about technical details, a lot of people, they get caught up on the, the, the technical details of making an integration work or opening up their Amazon seller account and, and they get frustrated and you know what I'm I'm there with you I get frustrated pretty easily if something doesn't work right away and then I I watch a video and I'm like this video it's too complicated it's not exactly the same as what I'm looking at here it's like everything's kind of scattered I recently 
just ran into this with a, a program that I was using um, to do Facebook ads for Amazon. And the training videos were like two hours long. And I'm like, well, I just need this one detail. Do I really have to watch this two hour training video? Well, I mean, yeah, I had to. So I sat there and I watched the training video um, and I scrolled through and I, you know, you can click and look at various sections of the video. And I was like, oh, there's the piece of information that I wanted. It's like 10 seconds long, but I really needed that. So these things are ever present in any training course that you take. And there is no way for any person making a course to keep updating videos when details change. So what I always tell people is focus on what they're trying to teach you, not which buttons they're pushing. So people are like, oh, I don't know where the this button is on the screen. And I'm like, well, you know there is a button on the screen that says upload. So it might not be in the same place, but it will be there. So focus on the process rather than the, the individual steps that are going through. And it is hard to absorb these things sometimes. If you've never done any of this stuff before, it is not something that you just jump into. It might take you several weeks to even get an Amazon account open or to get the integration connected and working and you might be frustrated. Uh, just keep persisting at it. The number one reason that uh, these things, that people quit doing this online stuff is that they just get bogged down by the technical details. And which is weird to me because, I mean, once you get past that, you figure out how the integrations work and what's going on when they don't work or why it might not be working for you. Once you get past all that, I mean, everything gets really easy. I, sorry, I shouldn't say really easy, but after two years for me, all of this stuff is just dead simple. I could probably put up 100 listings in two days with no difficulty whatsoever because I just I know what I'm doing and I I was at that point after about three or four months and once you get there it's uh you look back and be like well I don't know how that ever seemed so hard it makes perfect sense now so what I always tell people is just click around when you get uh, an Amazon account if you get your seller account approved just start clicking around and looking at the various screens even if you don't know what they're for at least look at them and see what kind of information is being presented to you. Like click the different options. It's pretty hard to screw things up on the Amazon seller account. Um, especially if you don't have any listings on it. You're not gonna just you're not gonna get suspended for clicking around your Amazon account. But you you need to explore these things. Take your time, watch the videos twice. Um, just don't get frustrated right away when things don't work the way you expect them to. And I have seen people saying well, I thought this was easy and simple to do, and, and I have to laugh at that. I'm like, you think, I mean, this is easy and simple once you learn what you're doing, but you're talking about learning how to create an online store on a platform that you, you don't know anything about. Um, it is much easier to open up an Amazon account than it is to open up a Tim Hortons um, imagine what you would need to know to build a Walmart or to build a small grocery store and think of yourself going through all of the difficulty to do that, you know, buying the land, uh, getting the finance and creating the corporation, hiring the people, building the, the building. I suppose you got to do that one first, but then you got to buy the stock. You got to do all this stuff. Like this is actually a very simple kind of business. But it's not always easy, and it's not as simple as people think. So I know that when you see these courses, you kind of feel the hype in them. And uh, um, I always, I'm always very honest with people. I'm like, you know what? It's not going to be easy. So expect it to be a little bit challenging at first, especially in the beginning. Don't expect your sales to, to bring you a full-time income in the beginning. They won't. They absolutely will not. But they will build over time. Try to do five to ten times as better as you did last year. So if you've been doing this for a year, you should be aiming for five to ten times better than you did last year. 
That's my personal goal. And uh, we'll see if I get there this year. So finally, we've got to the summertime things. So of course, all of the fun summertime activities, you should be still creating uh, print-on-demand designs for camping and mountain climbing, fishing, quadding, uh, I don't know, anything. Anything that's a summertime activity or a warm weather activity, uh, make designs for it. It's not that hard. There's lots of things. You just got to do a Google search if you are curious about what kinds of summertime activities. Just go into Google and do summertime activities list and it'll come up with a list. And then take each item and start looking up phrases for each item um, and start creating designs. I have talked about this before. If you have trouble creating designs, go back to, uh, I can't remember which episode it is, but you know, look through the list of episodes. I've done one on creating designs. It's not super difficult. Everybody always makes this very hard. It's not that hard. Also, customization is always a very hot thing. In fact, most of the hot sellers are doing um, customization, particularly on Etsy and also on Amazon. Amazon is a little bit harder to do customization because uh, it's just a really detailed process for each listing. It is not kind of a low-hanging thing, but uh, it is really valuable, and you can make a lot of sales doing that. I don't do as much customization because I want this to be automated. I don't want to have to sit down and create a new design for every customer. i got stuff to do. Uh, but if you have a little bit of time on your hands and you want to try to milk some sales, customization is a fantastic way to do that. Also, summer items that could be print-on-demand. T-shirts are great. Um, probably not going to sell too many hoodies right now because uh, it's really hot and people don't want to sweat in a hoodie. They want to wear a nice T-shirt. Tank tops for women. Um, oh, right. Um, getting married stuff. So, of course, June is gone, but uh, July and August are still pretty hot and heavy um, periods for marriage and engagements. So, and this is something that I need to to do as well, is make some items that are for engagements or getting married. And, of course, Etsy is really good for this. And uh, what else is there? Back to school. I mean, yeah, it's July, but the summer is going to fly by. That's just a rule of thumb. Winter is like seven years long. Summer is seven days long. And we've got college, university, trade schools coming up. Teacher um, appreciation gifts. All these kinds of things are fantastic. So start creating those designs right now. Get them listed. If you are a new seller and you're wondering what to expect over the next couple of months, uh, if you just open up an Amazon account, a lot of people get frustrated because Amazon takes a long time to kind of build on. And that's because it's very competitive. And you have to get past certain thresholds in order to get any sort of love from Amazon. So, of course, summertime is slow. You're not going to see a ton of sales during the summer. Um, it is is most likely going to be, you know, uh, very slow. So that makes it a little bit frustrating because you're hoping to make a few sales. That first sale is always a huge mental boost, an emotional boost, and you think, ooh, this is really working. But don't just work on Amazon. Work on Etsy as well. Do both. There's no reason not to do both. You can put the same listings on both platforms. You can even use basically the same title for both. Um, Amazon, basically the reason that Amazon is a tough one to get started on is because Amazon has a lot of fraud and there are new sellers who are opening up accounts with the nefarious intention of defrauding people. And it takes, uh, it doesn't take, well, sorry, what, what they're doing is that they, they'll wait a few months so that Amazon trusts the account. So Amazon has, and this is not an official thing, by the way. This is just sort of an unofficial thing, but we know that it's true. 
because we've seen it. Amazon puts new sellers in kind of a sandbox and you don't get a lot of traffic. Your listings get listed at the bottom of any any search. This is normal. They may not even be indexed. So you might be thinking, well, you know, I created a nurse mom mug, but I can't find it when I search it. Well, that's because there are a lot of listings above yours. When you are new in a platform, everything goes to the bottom. That's normal. Somebody has to be at the bottom, and it's you. But you work your way up by gaining Amazon's trust. So the best way to gain Amazon's trust is to make a few sales. Do not have someone buy your stuff or try to buy your own things to rank it, rank your listings. That's actually, uh, Amazon is, that's prohibited, basically. And think about it. I mean, if everybody could buy their things and rank their items, that's that's what everybody would be doing. So don't do that. You cannot buy your own products on Amazon. They won't even let you. You you can click buy now and it won't work. So just keep listing things and, I mean, keep working at it. Eventually, you're bound to make a sale. And when you do make one sale, you'll you'll rank up a little bit on Amazon's radar. And once you make about 50 sales, 50 to 100, you'll probably get the buy box. And when you get the buy box, then you know that Amazon kind of trusts you. But you, you gain momentum over time. So basically, when you find something that sells really well, it gives a boost to your other listings in addition. So everything kind of gets ranked up and uh, sales bring more sales. And everybody gets frustrated by that, but that's how it works. And a lot of people have pushed past that initial thing and built that momentum and are doing really well on Amazon. I'm one of them. So it does work. So there's also something you should know about Amazon. There is a new uh, thing on Amazon where they are suppressing any listing that breaks the rules on titles. And I'll see if I can link to that in the show notes. There's a, sort of a best practice guideline. And it used to be that Amazon would just say, this is the best practice. We'd like your listings to look like this. Now they're actually suppressing listings that don't meet those the, uh, basic things. So don't keyword stuff. Don't pack a whole bunch of useless keywords into your titles. Keep your titles short, 80 characters or less. They should not be anywhere near uh, like 90 characters. That's way too many. Um, these are not... We're not selling private label products that are potentially going to sell, you know, 50 to 100 units a day. We're talking about, you know, maybe one or two units a day for most of the things that you're going to sell, or none at all for 80% of them. So a short title that's appropriate for that product, who it's for and who it might be from. Um, maybe, you know, if there's like nurse mom, you can put in emergency nurse, you can put in ER, you can put in nursing but don't try to cram a whole bunch of non-related things like doctor or something like that because it's not going to help you and it's potentially going to get your listing suppressed in the search. So just keep that in mind. And um, let's see here. What else do I want to cover for summer? Yeah, so a lot of the work that you're going to do in the next month or two or three, uh, you're not going to see any benefit from that for a while. You might not see any sales on some of these items till October or November. So I wouldn't recommend uh, starting to send in FBA product unless you have things that you know will sell because they've sold before. Now is actually a really good time to send in some stock for FBA. It's slow and your items will ship there pretty quickly. I've been seeing all of my stuff come into stock and it's quite nice. Um, so. I know that once, you know, we get past the the end of school joy and everybody kind of gets back from camping and they start shopping again, that those items will start to sell again. And then I will have to see how much stock I will need for Christmas because Christmas, it it's, um, seems to be feast or famine. So you'll have one you know, listing that sells really slow, but you'll have another listing and it might even be the same design, but it'll sell, sell out like 
in two weeks and you'll be sold out and you'll be like well it's too late for me to order anymore so that kind of sucks but uh it's always a guessing game on these things so that's why it's recommended to spread out your listings over many many different niches don't make like 800 different mother's day or mom designs make sure you do only a few designs for each thing to make sure that you have the best chance of capturing a lot of sales. So that is all I've got to say, and I hope you guys are having a fantastic summer. I certainly am. I'm not wearing a shirt right now, and I may not wear a shirt for the rest of the day. So get out there, get some sun, get some vitamin D in you, and then come back and work on your business. With that, I will say cheers. <laughs>